All right, welcome back to part two of the turbo swap adventure of the Artisan AZ-1. Here is the stock turbo assembly. I have to take this piece off and connect it to the new one. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, clean this piece up and look at the stock turbo. It's a RHB31. That's the stock turbo from you know Cappuccino or uh, Suzuki Alta Works. Uh, it's basically the same engine, um, the same mounting and everything from an Alta Works, just in the back of the car. The new one is an HT07 Hitachi. I'm not really sure what it's from. I'll have to do some research. And once again, we have super long bolts. So that piece is off. And let's check out the inside of the turbo. It's super tiny in there, and that's probably why the new turbo makes so much more power. But before, pretty gross, and bam, not too bad. Okay, it's kind of dirty, but still, it's better than it was, and the interior is really clean. So here's the real comparison. You can see the slight size difference, this one's definitely a little bigger. The, I mean, the intake hole is a lot bigger. Um, and so here's the piece, like that. So it's just gonna mount like that on the new one. I have a new gasket and all that stuff, so yeah, should be good. And then it's just the reverse, tightening these up. So how do turbos work? Well, the exhaust air goes in here, spins around, spins this little fan in there, which is connected with a rod that goes through here, spinning this fan, forcing air, that way, back into the intake. So you're turning wasted energy into more power. So it's high efficiency. I like it. So day two, back in the car, and I'm gonna try and put everything back together today. But first, I'm going to remove the oil filter because this is probably the easiest time uh, to do it. And since it's so tucked in there, I can't even, like, I can't even fit my hand around it. Uh, let alone any tools, so I'm using the hammer screwdriver in method. Yep, work like a charm. Phew. Yep, so I have no idea how you would do it normally. Maybe jack the car up, but then there's this, this hose that goes right below it. And there's these two mounts on either side. There's some kind of pump, I'm not sure. But yeah, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Imagine having to remove the turbo just to change the oil. So here's the original filter that was in there. DS01. And I've got a brand new one, DS01. And I'll just put that back on and change the oil once I put everything back together. And if you're wondering where I get all my parts, uh, it's usually joust.com, the uh, Japan Yahoo auctions. Um, I got five of these just because I figured, okay, I'll, I'll probably change my oil five times and then the engine will explode because I'm boosting too much. Alright, time to drain the oil. Let's see if you can see. It's finally time to put this stuff on. So comparing the stock exhaust manifold, it's pretty heavy. Uh, this one's actually a lot lighter for how how much bigger it is. Oh, uh, it's starting to rain. But luckily, I can work from the inside. All right, I'm gonna get in there and swap this real quick. Protection. So as you can see, the stock manifold's gasket is totally worn and fused. So I had to order a new one. And I called up Mazda to find out what the part number was, and they're like, yeah, we don't carry that. It's actually a Suzuki part. So this is the exact same Exhaust manifold gasket from a cappuccino. Just FYI. Okay, so it's gonna just sit right in there like that. And the turbo is gonna mount right below it. So with the power of editing, it's on. So how cool is this? My dad got me this snaking camera thing. So I can go in here and see where the bolts and stuff are. Now we play a game of, is it lined up? And it is almost lined up. Huh. One important thing to note when you're installing the header is 
these two hex bolts are different sizes and the shorter one goes here because as you can see there's this little um, like a indent it goes in a little bit further so that it has more room for the compressor side of the turbo and I found that out because I tried to use the longer bolt and the compressor side of the turbo was touching it just a little bit so you need like two millimeters that's all you need it's ridiculous I turn on the light so you can see a little bit better so when it's all in it's flush just about it sticks out maybe a millimeter or two um, but before it was sticking out a little bit further and the turbo just wouldn't fit so yeah kudos to the engineers of this uh, this engine and this turbo setup but I hate you all getting this bolt on that side there's this weird little bolt that was the hardest thing I've done in a long time it probably took like an hour of frustration but then again how good does that look yeah fancy and make sure you torque these bolts correctly to as tight as you possibly can because you never want to remove these again. And you may be asking, why, Sam, are you not converting the car to electric? It's 2016. Why are you messing around with turbos? Well, uh, it's a good question. Yep, I thought about it a lot. You know, this car has this weird little three-cylinder engine and it's a turbo, it's a 657cc. And I figure this engine is kind of part of the car's history. It's it's just as unique as the uh, Gullwing doors in a way. Um, so I figured I will uh, just try and get as much power out of it as I can. And when it blows up, I'll definitely convert it to electric because it will blow up. Okay, turbo install step one. So you want to dunk the turbo kind of down like this. And then get this side on the left under this hose. So get it in kind of this position where you're rotated out and then you gotta kind of force your way up under this hose kind of like that and then you just push it back like that and then it should be in there kind of yeah i've basically shot tons of video over the past two weeks or so uh, I know I said I would just install it the next day, but uh, it's taken a long time and I've had the turbo in and out. I don't know. I can't even, um, I can't even, I love, I've lost count. So I'm just going to cheat with the editing and say that it was easy and uh, just show you the tricks that I've learned so far. Um, hopefully it'll help. Basically the problem so far were this hose being too thick and the turbo not being able to move past this because there's this little this little tube sticking out for the coolant and this bolt up here that had to be flush so here is the new coolant line pretty sure that's coolant and i just routed it back where it used to be so it's kind of out of the way hopefully it's enough but i have a feeling it's not because just this thickness right here is uh pushing against the compressor side of the turbo and even this little the hose clamp right there is going to be in the way. Um, it's ridiculous. As you can see on the turbo, there isn't any room at all. There's like, this is where it hits the oil filter, and this is where it hits that hose clamp. And just to show you the clearance, there is the oil filter uh, on the pipe that I'm having an issue with. It seems like there's enough room around the bottom of it, but I'm guessing where the turbo is hitting is on the top. Um, can't really see it now, but on the top where there's one of these lips, um, I have a feeling that that is the issue. And here you can see the issue. The little uh, bulge, a lip thing on that tube is touching the turbo. And if I want to get the turbo in and actually bolt it up like it is now, I have to, I don't know, <laughs> yeah this sucks. Alright, I'd had enough of that and I got the old hammer and just bashed it over a little bit and so um, we'll see if that works, we'll see, if, see if that affected anything. <laughs> Sometimes things just need a little persuading. My buddy Conrad calls it percussive maintenance. Even better, I have a feeling I get to use the new hose that 
key Chiro sent me, which is super reinforced, so should handle high pressure and stuff. And now this hose is touching the other one, um, so it's kind of hard to get on, but it's better than it touching the turbo and getting really hot and melting and causing issues. So yeah, whatever, it's gonna work. <laughs> It's gonna fit! <laughs> you have no idea how frustrating that was. And now for something equally frustrating. A bolt has to go in there. Yeah. And it's an oil line. So here's the bolt. Basically, oil goes in there and comes out the bottom. Um, and so to get that in there, you just have to keep it loose. Otherwise, you can't, you know, thread it with your hands. Um, if you tighten it up first, you can't get your fingers in there. It's ridiculous. So, thread it up as tight as you can while it's kind of loose like this, and then uh, mount the turbo to the header. Yep, this is what I'm doing. This is my life now. <sighs> to make things even more fun, on the new turbo, you have these uh, hoses are in a different place, and so if you go to tighten it. You get, you get like, you can't, you can maybe go under for like a little bit, yeah, it sucks. Okay, whatever, it's, it doesn't matter, it's in, it's gonna fit, everything bolts up, it's gonna be perfect, except for that, uh, whatever, I'll fix the down pipe later. Easy. <laughs> but, it's that one that I'm worried about. Let's see what the situation is, bolt wise. So, uh, it should be okay. I'll just move the turbo a little bit. So, here's the bolt. It's like this long, right? It's the best bolt drawing ever. So here's the base of the header. Here's the hole or whatever. Here's the turbo. Google's nail. And then here's like, there's a, there's a pipe that goes like this. The, the pipe is actually like this. So to get the bolt in, you can only really like angle it like this and get it in. That doesn't work at all. And then, uh, and then getting the wrench in to tighten it is impossible too. So basically I'm going to cut this bolt just a little bit off to make it easier. Yep. And there you go. Simple as that. See if it works. In case you were wondering though, the bolt does fit uh, just normally, but you have to get the turbo a lot lower so you can stick the bolt in first and then uh, put the turbo up to it. Uh, but inside the car obviously that doesn't work because you can't get the turbo to fit as it is. Uh, I had to force it in and cheat. So I really don't care. Just cut the bolt, whatever. Make it work. It's been too long. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Finally, the turbo is mounted. So now, I'm gonna put all the hoses back on. So this will be fun. Start with this one. That one goes there. This one goes here. And this one, I removed a little later on to get the turbo out. So that one just goes there. And then this one in the front connects to this one. And the hose that we had a huge problem with that we routed down here connects to here. So I just have to cut that to make it fit because it's way too long. Um, in fact, I might actually use part of this to replace the hose that went on there. Yeah, I will actually because that's cool. I'm just using some wire cutters. They worked really well. Um, you can use garden shears, whatever you have. So yeah, just attach this. It's still a pain. It's not even on yet. Um, and then put on your new uh, hose clamp and yeah, you're good to go. And that's yeah, blood, but I thought it was oil actually. <laughs> yeah, I'll get back to that one. But in the meantime, I'll do this one that goes straight across. And that is about so long. So I'll just measure that up and cut it. So what I did was I lubed up this um, with some chain lube just from a bike. Uh, just so I can get this on because these hoses that News uh, provided are super small. Like the diameter is really tiny compared to these. Uh, it, fit, it fit just fine on the stock ones, but on the new tubes, 
uh, these pipe things. It's ridiculous. Um, this one I barely got on, but I just tightened up the uh, clamp. And up here, since a pipe is coming out, I put the um, the clip part uh, where you tighten it on the bottom, just because there's not going to be much room up here. Um, and in order to get the exhaust, uh, the downpipe, just where I needed it, um, there's a bolt way down there. Um, you can kind of see it. It's like it's right there. And if you loosen that, that's the mounting point to the engine. Um, if you loosen that, then it can shift a little bit and then you can tighten it up again. And so I'm going to put those bolts in now. And then you just plug this one back in. Now that I've put the intercooler hose back on, there's only one thing left. And it's this intake pipe from the turbo. So, uh, here's the stock one. Um, I've seen a lot of people try and use it online, but uh, it doesn't fit with the header. Um, basically, Kiichiro said, if I want to buy the header, I have to buy this because, yeah, it doesn't fit. Um, there's this crazy, uh, this crazy pipe here, so I have to use the new one, which is this shiny thing. So now it just fit right there and look awesome. Here's a comparison. Um, the only thing that is kind of weird is that this, uh, whatever this is, this other intake line is a lot fatter than this one. Um, I'll see if I can just make it fit. This news kit is awesome. Like, it includes gaskets too. So yeah, everything's good to go. And you've included some bolts. Where are the bolts? There's the bolts. Somewhere. Yeah, cool. Okay, I took the intercooler hose back off because when you mount this, this pipe um, is way up there. So I'm gonna either I'm going to either have to cut this right here or find a new one, and it just ends right there. So I should just find a new one, actually. Yeah. Unfortunately, that means taking this other intercooler hose off. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. In traditional AutoZam fashion, more oil in the intake. Don't know what that means. What does that mean, guys? Do I have a problem? Is my engine gonna blow up? Please tell me it's gonna blow up. Alright, so I took that off, and yeah, I definitely should replace this. This is kinda gross. But yeah, the problem is this diameter fits this just fine, but doesn't fit the new intake tube. It's a lot smaller. Um, so I'm gonna go to the shop and see if they have any uh, hoses that like go from a fat diameter to a smaller one. Um, we'll see. But something I found out is that I can access, well I might be able to access the spark plugs from inside here. Because there's a lot more space on this side than on the other side. Um, so I might have to cut this video short. Sorry guys. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, now that I have everything off, I'm gonna try and change the spark plugs first and complete the whole turbo hosing stuff in part three. So, sorry about that, but uh, keep watching and it's gonna be crazy. Part three, I'll hopefully start it up and see what it's like, see if it even starts up. All right, thanks for watching.